She was born a slave in my great-great-grandfather's family in Tennessee. Adeline Blakely was born July 10, 1850, working for Ann Sugg's family. Shortly after, the family and their slaves came to Fayetteville, Arkansas. Along with their 13 children, they had brought 20 slaves with them. And Adeline was just a little, not quite two-year-old child when they came. Several years later, trained a house slave, Adeline was passed down through the family as a wedding gift, taking the Blakely last name. My great-grandfather had a custom of when his, one of his children married, he gave them their choice of a slave, and she chose Adeline. Not even a teenager, Adeline's ties to her blood family were broken. In Adeline's report, she said that the last time she saw her mother was when she was 12 years old, and that just brings it home to you so much how terrible the Civil War was, and slavery in particular. It was slavery that did that. They, they often would break up families. After the Civil War, at just 15 years old, Adeline had the choice to leave the Blakely family, but instead chose to stay. She said that the soldiers came after the war and accused uh, Miss Blakely of holding her against her will. And she said, no, this is my family. This is where I'm gonna stay. From that point on, Adeline helped raise 12 children, none her own by birth, but hers just the same, and being the last one. Adeline and I were pretty important people in that family, and we've got lots of pictures of the two of us together and as sort of a signifying that. She was just a very kind and caring person. She was fun to be with, uh, she was a good cook, Anne says Adeline truly was just part of the family. Nevertheless, there was still a lot of bias about blacks, and not everybody held her in the high degree that our family did. Anne remembers a family trip to the circus in California when Adeline was not allowed to sit with the family in the whites only section. And so, of course, the family was not going to put up with that. We weren't going to send her somewhere else to sit. And so there was much maneuvering and possibly some money crossed hands. Finally, uh, one of them said, well, is she a nursemaid to the baby? And they said, yeah, yeah, she's the nursemaid. So then it was okay. But back in Fayetteville, her reputation preceded her. Adeline was really considered a celebrity. Everybody looked up to Adeline. So when she passed away in 1945, at 95 years old, the Blakeleys insisted she be buried in their family plot in Fayetteville's Evergreen Cemetery. Jerry Hogan with the Washington County Historical Society says it was the most prestigious cemetery in the area. Many of the, of the movers and shakers of this town are buried here. Well-known people like uh, J.W. Fulbright and his family, Edward Drell Stone, many University of Arkansas presidents. At that time, the cemetery was for whites only. But Adeline was so highly revered by the community and viewed as truly a part of the Blakely family, she was allowed to be buried there. The only African American that we know of buried in this cemetery is Adeline Blakely. Born a slave, but died a legend. Blessed with the family that picked her and that she chose to keep. Adeline Blakely's legacy in Fayetteville remains. And like the beginning of her life, her final resting place is in the presence of her Blakely family. They just wanted her with the family, where she had always been.